in and they the first week the day the governor signed the bills they were calling and saying is my appointment next week can I still have it you know can I still be there or they're coming in and they're saying well this is illegal and you know our clinic is located right on a very busy street right in downtown Fargo and it's shocking to me that they think that we're operating right there with a sign on the front of our building and protesters and escorts but they think it's illegal they women, think they're on like the Underground Railroad at this yes point. Yeah. yes but when a woman doesn't want to be pregnant she will go through hell high water in North Dakota blizzards floods you know she'll hit a deer on the way and have a flat tire and say can I still come when a woman doesn't want to be pregnant she'll do whatever she needs to do and unfortunately it just adds to the stigma that women feel when they hear all of these things about heartbeat, sex selection, genetic abnormality. You know, abortion is very common and the stigma is disgusting. Hmm. In terms of your health care providers, in terms of the doctors that are working at your clinic, obviously, Julie, you're dealing with them being attacked and targeted directly for harassment by these outside groups. Um, one of the things that I've, I've talked to medical students and stuff about in the past is whether or not there are enough people who are coming up through the medical training system to know how to do abortions, to know how to provide this kind of care, and who are brave enough to do it. It's asking a lot, not only of you guys as individuals running these clinics, but also of the providers who could be doing anything. But doing this is, is, a, is, is gotta be tough. What? <laughs> We're so nice. Well, <laughs> I know. Stop being nice. Just whack each other. Well, one of, the, one of the things that I was told after Dr. Tiller was assassinated was that um, a lot of the medical students were coming forward saying, I want to be trained in abortion care, um, which seemed, did not seem logical to me um, because of the, the fear factor. Um, and there are a lot of good programs around the country um, that are really working to train uh, OBGYNs in residency and family uh, practice uh, residents in uh, abortion care for women. It is. Um it's got to take a toll. I mean, I was I was struck um, in talking to you guys how much credit you give to your staff uh, for being involved and being unafraid and being willing to be there and go through it every day. Um, I imagine. I mean, I've been covering reproductive choice, uh, reproductive rights, politics for a very long time. I've never seen this kind of crucible that we're seeing right now. It's never been this aggressively. The rights have never been this aggressively rolled back. I'm wondering if it must form some forge some kind of solidarity or a sense of at least being all for one and one for all in fighting this stuff. It must. It absolutely does and it does with providers across the country um, and with our staff. They feel they feel the love and what these laws have done and what this scrutiny has done has created more allies in our communities. Um, we, the day the governor signed the bills, we cleared off the staff bulletin board. It is full, it is triple packed, it is off the bulletin board, it's on the wall, it's on another wall. And so we see that and we read those messages, of messages of support. Of support. And we read those and it just, it lets you know, and somebody said specifically, I represent thousands behind you. And so those kinds of messages are really important for us. And it does it does increase your dedication, believe it or not, just like Julie said. You know, the assassination of Dr. Tiller only strengthened our resolve. It did not make us back down. Let me ask you one one more question about